Back with another episode of Chef Knives to Go Quick Look Product Review. I'm Steve Gamash, and what we have this time is the uh, Jiko VG1 Santoku 170mm knife. The uh, construction on this is three layers. So what they've got is the hardcore steel is VG1 full stainless steel. Heat treats typically 59-ish, maybe 60 Rockwell on that. So it's not super hard, which means it's forgiving. The cladding on either side of that for that three-layer construction has, uh, it's a soft stainless cladding, so it's an all stainless blade. And uh, the weight and dimensions on these should be fairly similar from knife to knife, the way they're constructed. Uh, this particular one is 159 grams or 5.6 ounces. The edge length is right about 170, which is 6.7 inches. And the overall length with the handle is about 11 and a half inches. These are pretty thin blades, so uh, thickness varies a little bit as you go around, but it's a basically 1.8, 1.9 all the way down the blade. This can vary a little bit from knife to knife. Come on, there we go. And not a lot of taper here. You can see it pretty much maintains that thickness as we go down. And then the grind isn't super high on this, so the tip gets thin right at the end. And it's not a super skinny tip, so that's going to give you little trade-off, get a little more meat there for uh, robustness, but you're not going to get like super ghosting through products as if you had a super skinny tip on there. So kind of a balanced trade-off there. And then here's your edge profile there in the chill shot. So it's not super skinny either, so that makes this knife quite forgiving. There's always trade-offs and a design on something. Um, well, let's see, we talked about that. Blade height, about 44.7 on this one. That can vary a little bit at the back of the heel. Handles a, uh, you can see this is kind of a hybrid uh, western handle. So it's uh, got black pack of wood for the blade slabs, the sides. And then it's got three stainless rivets on it. And then they've got some, uh, it looks to be copper. I should have checked the web page on my bad. But I believe that looks like copper. Uh, if it's, yeah, I'm not. I'm 99% sure that looks like copper. So you've got a nice, cool uh, aesthetic there on the tang. It's a partial tang and does not go all the way through like a traditional uh, full tang western handle. What's nice about that, it's a light blade, so that, that lessens the weight back here. And that brings the balance point further forward than it would be with a full-on handle. So your balance point's kind of right by where that choil is. This continuously flows. Um, you've got a little bit of a step here into the bolster, and then it flows into the choil there. So you've got a pretty good continuous spot there for your finger for a pinch grip. And again, the handle being a little bit heavier is going to bring that balance point back behind your pinch grip point. Um, if you're doing a racket grip, it's probably pretty neutral. For a, for a uh, pinch grip, it's going to be a little handle heavy. Uh, da, da, da. Let's get our beauty shot here. It's a really neat looking knife. So um, the finish has a slight diagonal bent to it, which is really cool. You can see the finish on there goes diagonally there. It does the same thing there. It's a forward diagonal on both sides, so kind of a unique uh, take on the, you know, kind of machine finish. I shouldn't say belt, but a belt finish to it. And then uh, this looks like uh, embossed or stamped in kanji. They're getting so good at doing this these days that it gets harder and harder to tell whether it's hand engraved, chiseled, or you know whether it's laser or whether it's pressed in. So they're they're really coming a long way with how nice these look. Yet they're not hand engraved, but still looks cool nonetheless. It's very well done. The blade is actually fairly stiff given the construction and how thin the blade is. Um, let's see, Let's. what else do I want to cover here? So the bolster is not a like an integrated type bolster. It's probably a pin-on bolster. Come on. There we go. But there's what the bolster looks like. But it's a neat, neat effect. So the handle's not especially large, uh, but uh, given the, side of the size of the blade, it fits it pretty well. The, the handle's very, very comfortable. Uh, fit and finish wise, they've got a little bit of relief on the corners of the spine. Uh, the choil could maybe be a little bit better relief. They've got a little bit of the sharp edge on the corners of that into there. So for my knife, I'd probably get a little sandpaper out and clean that up. But, uh, you know, some people might not mind that at all. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Let's take a look at the cutting edge profile. BG1 is a decent kitchen edge steel. There's nothing wrong with it. It'll get nice and sharp. It's quite forgiving because it's not quite as hard. And the edges on this aren't super duper thin, so this will be a pretty forgiving knife. It's kind of got that hybrid handle, so this might be a good knife if you're trying to move somebody into this uh, style of Japanese knife. And uh, they're kind of used to Western knives. They don't want to go full wa handle. So this is kind of a hybrid yo or Western handle. Here's your edge profile. Fairly curvy, but nice and smooth. There's no bumps in it or anything. It's a nice roll all the way through. So uh, tip-wise, I can get pretty high on this, about right there for the tip wants to dig in. So it'll rock pretty well over medium-small stuff. It will definitely do push-pull cuts, glide cuts. You can do some tip draws with it. Uh, just not like a pure chopper, but not, not this style of blade anyway. So uh, it's just w well done. This is a cool knife. So... Another neat offering from Chef Knives to Go. This is the uh, Jiko VG1 Santoku 170mm knife.